Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. So many questions under the last video, thank you so much. I will divide all of these questions into Astro related and non-Astro related because I think it just makes sense to have them separated. Let's get started. What was the one thing that inspired you to start astrophotography and what do you do as a day job? Keep up the awesome work, Tim. Thank you, Helena. I don't think that there is this one thing that got me into astrophotography, but many pictures online and especially the videos of Trevor Jones, of course, the Astro Backyard videos were awesome to look, awesome to look at because just like me right now, he was in this he was in this state that what we all love that we could that we could explore new equipment, new methods, and get these amazing photos and get better each time. I think one video of him really got me. It was the his first video of the Crescent Nebula. The whole video itself brilliantly made and the image at the end. When I saw this image and his first image of the Orion Nebula, without a doubt one of the most beautiful nebulae out there, I think these two pictures themselves really got me started for the sobbing. The next question came quite often, my day job. I work as a cashier in one of the most popular German grocery stores and before that I worked at another retail company. Also I am a table tennis trainer, I train the kids in the, in the local table tennis club, that's quite fun actually. Hey Tim, what did you study and do as a job? How long are you doing astrophotography and biggest inspirations? What did I study? That's a good question because I studied physics for three years but I cancelled the studies because it was way too hard and way too dry and dusty I'd say and I will study something else very soon. How long are you doing astrophotography? Let me, let me take a look when the first video was released, hang on. I released the first video on, well it says one year ago, I can't really get anything much from that, but the first video was in La Palma, which was March, M March 18, and I think I started with, the first picture that my friend Leon and me took was maybe in August, Aug August 2017, I think that's a pretty good mark there. Biggest inspirations. As I said, many videos on YouTube from famous astrophotographers and another thing that really drives me into this hobby is the music because there are so many great artists out there. As you may have seen, I'm using music from Vaxento, my favorite indie artist, and Keith Merrill, you've heard lots of his music in the past in my videos. And just listening to these soundtracks and trying to think about a cool image I could take and combine it into a video with such a big reveal is so thrilling and every time stunning to look at for me. So the music is such a big part and really gets me motivated every time. Are you interested in visual astronomy or just astrophotography? Basically just astrophotography. Back at the ITV I will link the video up there somewhere. I did a small interview with one guy with the gigantic mirror, uh, Dobsonian telescope. Every time I came up with astrophotos he was like, no, visual astronomy, the only type, the only real type of astronomy. If you want pictures of deep space you can just download them online from Hubble. They are 20 times better than you could ever take them. And we, we were having a small discussion about this topic, so visual versus astrophotography. But the one thing is... Yes, I could download the images from Hubble, and they are maybe 100 times better than I could take them, but, but I'm also cooking my own food, because I like it that way. I could go to famous restaurants here, but making it myself is much more pleasant. Pretty much only astrophotography. I did some observings before with my, with a small refractor telescope my parents gave, gave to me when I was 10, but that was... Not very much. Basically only photography. The next one from Tiago Ramos is a long one. 
let me divide it into some separate parts. Given that you have more experience now, what would you have bought and what would you not have bought starting out? And this is a very interesting one. You see most of my equipment back here, the guide scope, the Omegon refractor, the HQ5. Looking back now at almost two years of astronomy, the HQ5, definitely, this thing is super stable, it runs super consistently and even though the legs are still bumped and bent from the one trip to La Palma, this thing performs and I'm pretty sure it will perform in five years. So that one, definitely a must have. The guide scope and the guide camera, no problem at all. I have I haven't had a single problem with those. The one thing that I'm struggling almost always in the nights. I've seen another question about this topic in the comments, so I will talk about the Elmegon telescope later. But you can guess right now from this explanation, I would not have bought this from the beginning. DSLR at first or jump directly into one shot color or mono. Definitely DSLR first. If you're new to photography or maybe you jumped into this hobby from the photography world into the astrophotography, definitely go with the DSLR first. It is way easier, you can handle the raw files with no problem with all the known software. Having a DSLR in your hand you understand what happens in this device. The problem being with a camera like this you hear nothing, you don't hear a shutter click, you don't know am I taking exposure right now? And with a dedicated camera you have to handle the FITS files. And this file format is awesome but very complicated to handle. So if you jump into astrophotography, I would definitely recommend to have a DSLR first. And if you're having fun and lots of fun, you can consider getting a dedicated astronomy camera. And now is the question about the Omegon telescope. Did you have any problems with Omegon? I heard they have not the best quality. <sighs> This Omegon refractor right here was the first telescope I ever bought myself. If I should rate the imaging quality of this thing from 0 to 100, I would rate it at a maybe a 75. It's good, but it could it could be better. It's an Apo triplet. I haven't seen much chromatic aberration or field distortion with this thing, but I own two Omegon telescopes, the refractor you see right here, and maybe you have seen in some earlier videos, the Ritchie Gretchen telescope. And both have the same most annoying issue. The focus draw tube is so wonky. It's a classic Crayford draw tube, but both of these tubes cannot handle much weight. The tube right here, I had the DSLR with the two batteries and it was already too much. I would use the Batnov mask, set the focus right, and if I would tighten the focus and lock it, the tube would slip slightly, but enough to make the image out of focus, which is very bad. The Omegon telescopes are mid-range and they are good for beginners, but especially all, all of the, all of the, I own two of them and both have the same focus issue, which is very annoying. Is it possible to produce high quality images if you buy a long focal length telescopes or make a two or four frame mosaic? I think it really depends on the focal length because everything from let's say 300 to 900 millimeters can easily be handled by a refractor and you can produce amazing images with such a telescope but everything beyond 1000 I recommend getting a mirror telescope I tried to run with mosaics recently and you will see a video about that very soon. Do what you like, I don't think that there are any problems with deep telescopes or mosaics. Mosaic images have the higher resolution, but they take way more time. If you have a wide field telescope with a smaller refractor, you can go for that also. It's much easier and you can also produce good images, so, so go for both methods if you can. Now this one is interesting. If money was not an issue, what telescope, mount and CCD camera would you buy? I haven't explored very deep into the mount section yet or the DSLR camera section. I think the best wide field imaging refractor out there right now is the William Optics Redcat. And I think the best refractor out there for long focal lengths is the William Optics Fluorostar right now. 
I will show all of the names here but they are super expensive but if that was not an issue definitely some of the volume optics stuff because I've heard and I've seen the quality is top-notch. Mount wise I think I would go for the iOptron CM60. This thing can handle so much weight it's so sturdy it's not that portable anymore but I think if money was not an issue I, ha I would have my own garden and sales my peer out there so this mount definitely a must-have talking about the CCD camera I've had some emails about this topic recently because I think QHY released a new camera the QHY 600 and looking at the specs of this monster I think this is the best camera we can buy right now are you interested in astrophysics, e.g. the Big Bang, the evolution of the universe, its future, the unification of quantum mechanics and general relativity? Well, I used to study physics, so definitely a yes. I did a small course on astrophysics in the university and, and I think that was one of the few subjects I actually passed. Astrophysics, damn yes. The evolution of the universe, damn yes. He's also talking about the unification of quantum mechanics and general relativity which I think is considered to be the world formula. I don't know how it's translated into English, but combining these two theories is one of the most discussed topics in physics right now. I think it's about combining the string theory with Einstein's general relativity theory. And if we manage to combine these two theories, it is considered to be the one formula that describes everything. And if humanity gets the hands on such a formula, I don't think we would have any more problems in the future. Talking about science, not talking about humanity itself. V comes to astrophotography. How did you get to astrophotography? I think the first time I actually started thinking about this topic was at the university, me and my friends studying physics. We sat in the cafeteria and I was talking to my friend Leon about he wanted to get a new camera. And as he mentioned that he wanted to buy something new, I just threw in, well, I, I, I had a telescope once, maybe I could buy a new telescope and we, somehow we ended up with the idea of combining these two. And that's how my astrophotography career was born. Do you have someone whom re Do you have someone whom you regularly enjoy this hobby with? I know that these are very old English terms, but I'm still not used to them. Friend, family member, etc. No. I started this hobby with my friend at the university, and sometimes a friend of mine is coming over and we're having some night outs here. Most I do most of the stuff alone, but I think I would definitely appreciate somebody in the nights that would also be there, maybe someone quiet to talk to. That would definitely be nice. What or who inspired you to take up this hobby? Already explained this. I'm sure there was some standard moment or point when you first took an interest or when you interested grew into a passion slash addiction. As I just said, I had this talk that we could combine the camera and telescope. I then started researching about this hobby and very quickly I stumbled over YouTube on Astro Backyard. And that was really the beginning of this addiction. Gehst du auf Teleskoptreffen oder Messen? Do you visit telescope meetings and conventions? I was at the ITV star party earlier this year, but I really don't because I don't have much information about many astronomy related public events going on, at least here in Germany. I can't take the money and fly each year to Cherry Springs for example or Neve. I would love to visit Neve, but it's just out of my range. And I don't think that the astronomy community in Germany is that big compared to Neve, for example. I'd, I don't know yet, but I don't think we have such a, such a big community and such big meetings. I would definitely consider it if I heard about some of these things, but I haven't gone to many of those yet. Now, the next three questions of Doc O came quite recently and I had to look two of them up because I didn't understand the English and I had to ask about one of them because 
No offense, I think the English is just a little bit broken there. What are your aspersions in life? I've never heard the word aspersions before. I tried to translate it in Google Translate. It, I don't think that this makes much sense. I'm very sorry. But the next one was pretty clear. What in the long would you like to do professionally? Exactly what I'm doing right now. And his third question. Given your video and picture editing skills and your artistic abilities, would you consider a profession in which you would make use of those skills? Am I not doing this right now? Let's dive into the non-astronomy related because I don't think there are that many of them. How tall are you? I think the last time I've checked was 173 centimeters. If you are from America, you can try to look it up how many feet this is, but 173 centimeters. What came first, the chicken or the egg? I think with a scientific background, the best reasonable explanation I could give is life in general did not hatch from an egg. The first life forms ever were formed from the amino acids. I don't think this could be considered an egg. So, talking about the evolution, the chicken. If you had to eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Pizza. Don't say pizza. Damn it. I think it would be something healthy and tasty at the same time. I thought about this. I saw this question a few days ago and I thought about it. <laughs> I think this was the question I thought about the most because I really love cooking. I think I would go for a Caesar salad because there's so much good stuff in there and a little bit of chicken, which is tasty. So I. I definitely think I would go with that. How old are you? 22. And I think those were all the questions. It was a lot of fun to read and gather all these comments. The next things I will do, I will... I have a quite big project planned. Not as big as the Crescent Nebula one, but I want to do a small mosaic on an object. If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you've already seen the two panel mosaic, the one half of the image I want to shoot and I think t I think according to the weather forecast tomorrow will be n the next clear night I can get the third panel in then stay tuned for the next project new video will be up very soon if I get two more clear nights thanks again everyone my name is Tim I'm an astro addict I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us